Now, after talking about what a point is and what a line is and what a segment is, uh, now I want to go back up to number two. But this is this is what I was talking about earlier in class. How geometry is an, an is an axiomatic system. Um, we start with the with just ba basic truths um, that you can't argue, but you also you don't have to. Uh, define or defend. Uh, it's just common sense. just makes sense. So this is a point. And then from there we said, okay, well, <clears throat> if we have a point, well, if we're allowed to have one, then we've got to have two. We're allowed to have two. And what if we connect those two points? Well, then you got yourself a line. Well, what if I don't want the whole line? What if I want just the collection of points that's between those? Well, then that's a line segment. <clears throat> so if you want to add that to your definition of what a line segment is, um, it is the collection of, or it's the set of points between and including the two endpoints. Um, <clears throat> but when we're talking about lines and segments, you have to understand there's infinitely many points in a line or in between two points. So if I wanted to on this, I could add in a point and say, hey, I want to put point A there because we know that there exists one. <clears throat> Same thing here. If I want to put a point B, that's that's okay. We can absolutely do that. <clears throat> if you look over at the diagram three, originally we had X, Y, and Z. We had those three points. Just simply considering those three points, X, Y, and Z, not A that I added, you need to understand that there are a total of three segments here. Now, I know that it has the arrowheads, and I know that it's a line, but a segment is just a piece of a line. So there exists segment X, Y. And so if you wanted to write that, it would be segment X, Y. There exists segment Y, Z. <clears throat> And there's also the entire thing, segment X to Z. So there are three segments within that. <clears throat> and same thing here. We know theoretically there exists a line that contains these two points. And we could call that line, line DE. But it wasn't written, didn't have the arrowhead, so I'm just going to leave that be. But just know that theoretically those exist. So let's jump up to number two. Number two is a ray. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and define what a ray is. Uh, a ray consists, it, it uh, similar to a segment, a ray is kind of it's it's, it's kind of a it's, it's a piece of a line because <clears throat> a ray consists of one endpoint. then goes forever in one direction. So over here, if we just if we just analyze the diagram, we can see that it's this this geometric figure that we've called a ray, it starts here at F, and then <clears throat> because of this arrowhead, that tells us it keeps going on forever and ever. So this is the ray. So that would we could identify F as our endpoint. And then the direction that this ray is heading is in the direction of H. But <clears throat> recalling that we talked about collinear and what that word means, points on the same line, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination for us to realize that if F is going in the direction of H, well, it's going to have to cross through G to get there. So <clears throat> initially, we want to name this. Well, how do we name it? We use the ray symbol. Which is uh, a line with one arrowhead pointing to the right. And then underneath, <clears throat> you have two letters underneath this ray symbol. The first letter the first letter is your endpoint. And, and that kind of sounds weird because the 
because we'll be talking about it in class and we'll say, well, the ray begins here. It starts here at F, but that's the end point. So I know that kind of sounds weird, but that's what we call um, <clears throat> that in geometry. That is an end point. And then the second letter, distinguish or, or, or tells us in which direction the arrow, I'm sorry, the ray is going. The second letter is direction the ray is going. <clears throat> so taking that knowledge, if we wanted to, to name this, well, what we would write is we would say this is ray starts at F and then goes in the direction of H. But like I was saying earlier, if we start at F and we go to H, we're going to pass through G because F, G, and H are all collinear. So if I wanted to say, well, this is ray, F, start at F, and then go in the direction of G, that is an, that's another appropriate name for this ray because <clears throat> if it heads in the direction of G, it's going to keep on going forever, and since G and H are collinear, it's going to pass through point H as well. That's why these two uh, are the, uh, both appropriate names for this ray, this, this whole ray there, starting at F and going in the direction of H. Now, there is a third, I'm sorry, there's, there's a completely separate ray in this diagram where you change the end point. And that would be starting at G. So if I wanted to name it, <clears throat> I would say ray G, because it starts at G, and then it goes in the direction of H. You need to understand the difference between this ray that has two names, ray FH, and uh, ray GH. Those are completely different because... The first one we talked about is including this segment here from F to G, but the second one in orange is not including that segment. So those are completely different. Um, the the endpoints are different, so they can't be the same. On this note about rays, I do want to talk about a special case dealing with rays. I'm going to go all the way down here because we're, we're running out of room quick like. <clears throat> I'm going to copy down the or, or create a similar diagram to number three on this where we have a line with three points on it. Now within this line we can there's a whole bunch of rays. You've got ray A B, so start at A and go in B. That's also the same as ray AC, because you start in A and you go in that direction. Uh, there's ray CA, which is the same as ray CB. Um, and then you also have these two that are coming off of point B. So right now what I want to look at is I want to look at ray BA. So start at B, go in the direction of A. Notice that even though this ray in our diagram is heading in the uh, left direction, that doesn't change your notation. It'll in the notation, when you write it, when you name it and you label it, it'll always be pointing to the right. And the first letter will always be what the end point is, and the second letter will always be in which direction it's heading to. So I want to look at that right there, that is BA. And then in a different color, I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> and outline the other ray that I want to consider B, C. Looks like Halloween, doesn't it? All right, here we go, orange and black. So look at these two rays. We have <clears throat> ray B, A going to the left, and then we have a ray with a common end point, but going in the complete opposite direction, um, ray B, C. Now since A, B, and C, since these three points are collinear, <clears throat> and these two rays have the common end point B, but going in completely opposite direction. We call these guys opposite rays. These are opposite rays. 
And there's a couple of criteria. They got to be collinear. They absolutely have to be collinear. They have to have the same endpoint as we already talked. And obviously, number three, um, opposite directions. I mean, that would that would make sense. <clears throat> so if you have two rays that are have the same endpoint going in the complete opposite direction, um, and the only way that can happen is if all three points are collinear, we call those opposite rays. Now, what if you have a similar situation? Let's say I have a ray. We'll call it NJ. And then I have another ray, NA. But they're not going in complete opposite directions. What would we call that? Well, that is our next geometric topic, or, or sorry, geometric figure called an angle. And that is what 5 and 6 is all about. Now, if you, if you notice in this diagram, <clears throat> In orange ink, I added the number 3 in there, uh, and I added the number 7 in there. There's no significance with 3 and 7. It's just two numbers uh, that I chose uh, to place in there, and that will come in uh, into play in just a second. So here is, uh, here is two examples of angles. The definition of an angle, um, pretty, pretty basic. <clears throat> Um, just like I just got, or I'm sorry, it's, it's just what I got done explaining is it's two rays with a common endpoint. This common endpoint, so if you look here in example six, this point here, seven, that is a special name. Oh, wow, seven, goodness. This point here, point S, which is the common endpoint of ray ST and ray SR. That is a special name and it is called the vertex. So the vertex of an angle is the common endpoint of the rays. And then the, <clears throat> the sides, these, the sides of your angle, they're simply they're just the rays. So you got a vertex, that's the common endpoint of the two rays, and then <clears throat> the actual rays themselves are the sides of the angles. <clears throat> so how are we going to na name these, and how are we going to label these? Well, what we would say is we would, we would literally say, well, this is angle for number five. We could call that angle A. Because that is one of the methods of naming um, angles, is simply by the vertex. We won't use it that often, but it is acceptable. The symbol for an angle, it looks very similar to a less than symbol. That is the symbol for angle. If you look on page 5, you can notice that here it is there. This is angle one, this is angle B. So that's how the book is going to, is going to look. Uh, so it looks similar to uh, a lesson symbol, but different. Um, because the bottom is, is, is flat, rather than diagonal, like a less than symbol. For me personally, uh, I add a little arc there just to make it even more obvious that it's not a less than symbol so you'll see me do this in class and so this is the symbol for angle <clears throat>